make huge problems for Alan Gray. Something as simple as a windscreen wiper, but he can't obviously see through the screen. It's not working properly, and the wiper is actually sliding off the edge of the screen. The problem is that they can't actually get the spanner down to tighten the thing up behind the bonnet line. And the car's been stuck in the pits now for around about two minutes. Also problems on the inside of the screen with misting up. Whether something perhaps HRT didn't foresee, but now the car on its way back out of the pits. Well, thank you. We've got uh, the number 25 car on the approach to Caltex. Yeah, sorry, 2-0. That's the Denny Holm car, co-driving that with Paul Morris. Now they've got a, uh, a rescue vehicle out there as well. And yet the driver's standing there, isn't he? That's Apparently has hit the wall hard there. Alan and Price. I would think in the, in the interest of the race, maybe the pace car might even be brought out. Well, the pace car is just moving up pit lane now. We're going to have the pace car out the track. Alan Grice rejoins in 11th position after being in the pits for almost uh, two and a half minutes. Oh, topsy-turvy race, this pace car... We'll get out there and bunch up the field once again. I'm quite surprised. I thought they may have brought the pace car out even earlier today for the Brock car on the edge of the racetrack, but uh, certainly there's not much they can do here. Well, we're certainly starting to get a bit of wreckage on the side of the track, and with the slippery conditions, there's even greater danger of one of these cars sliding off and hitting the other car. So it's a mandatory safety measure by the organisers here. So the pace car on the track at the moment. Denny Holm was at the wheel of uh, this car. I certainly didn't do a driver change when they came in uh, before for the tyres. Paul Morris, the scheduled uh, co-driver. Well, that's a surprising event. The car doesn't seem to be damaged bodywork-wise. Well, that's shots from our uh, chopper cam, just hovering Tony Long. They've got a neck the brace on him. I just saw a neck yeah, brace on Yeah, I saw Denny. that too, Doug. That driver seems to be in some distress. Well, who's the guy in the helmet? That's the, the uh, crash driver of the crash driver. vehicle. Oh, I see, right. And um, to, uh, I know this would be causing some concern to our viewers in New Zealand taking the seven broadcast through uh, TV3 network. Denny Holm sitting there with the neck brace on. Tony Longhurst, um, who um, is in the pits to take over from Johnny Chicotto. 56-year-old Denny Holm, former World Formula One Championship champion from 1967. So he's given the wall a thump uh, down Conrad straight and may have jarred his neck. He doesn't look at all comfortable there. You, you can see the angle at which he's holding his head. Champion, driver, champion, bloke. This is uh, a most unfortunate incident. Well, there is the pace car. The pace car should come out and just hold them up and pick up the leaders. And you can see the diabolical conditions of Mount Panorama now. The skies are getting darker. The rain is getting heavier. There's the white flag, signalling official vehicle on the circuit. Well, that uh, was an awful piece of news. Yes, it's uh, bad luck, Denny, sitting there in the car, being attended to by the uh, the rescue crew. Good move from uh, race organisers, bring out the pace car and give free access to the, uh, the vehicle on Conrad Strait. There you can see the rescue vehicle was there very quickly. They're located at several points around the circuit. So this uh, pace car activity will certainly bunch up the field. Just what the positions will be, we won't know, because there's been so many tyre changes in a very short period of time, but we will have that for you as soon as we can. We're on lap 37 of the race that the pace car out. Here comes the uh, ambulance now uh, around to this uh, crash site with the 20 Benson and Hedges car in the wall. We check the Caltex race score. Richards and Scaife continue to lead the field in the number one Nissan ahead of Dick Johnson's Shell Sierra car 17. Then the second of the Nissan's car too, Neil Crompton now at the wheel there. Johnny Chicotto at the wheel of the 25 Benson and Hedges car in fourth place. And the Percy Grice HRT Commodore VP is in fifth position. In sixth, the Quinella for the HRT team. Brad Jones now at the wheel of car 15, followed by Steve Harrington driving the Larry Perkins entry number 11 Commodore. The Gibbs Onslow GTR in eighth position. Park and Parsons, car 35, the Nissan in ninth place. And Shiel and Crick in the second of the uh, Shell Sierra cars, car 18, rounding out the top 10. Pace car still out here at Mount Panorama Bathurst. The ambulance has arrived on the scene. We believe Denny Holm is unconscious, about to be extricated from that car and taken down to the medical centre. Let's take a look at uh, an incident we have here and see exactly what happened. 
Most of our cameras all ISO. This looks like uh, Denny Holm coming down. He's got a wheel out on the grass. He's aquaplane, you yeah. see, in the wet. He's offline and... He's clouded the wall there, there and it's brought him across the racetrack. Now, that doesn't look that dramatic, but you see what's happened is he's flicked his head sideways. You, you've got that support behind your head, but you haven't got the lateral support, and it's obviously damaged his neck in some way. And there is Denny pulling the car up, so... Uh, he must have been conscious at that time. Yes, he was, obviously, to put the brakes on, and uh, the ambulance officers on the circuit, pace car still out there, and he was in 14th position with this incident. They'll take the opportunity now that they have Denny out of the car. He'll be heading to the medical centre. And it is very well manned here at uh, Mount Panorama. Tony Longhurst, what a worrying time for Tony. He's had Johnny Chicotto out in his car. He's ready to take over his second car now. He's seen uh, out of it. And Frank Gardner, I would say, would be using a wise head just to calm him down. A number of incidents that we uh, have covered here today none more tragically than the accident involving Denny Holm, 56 years of age, World Formula One champion in 1967, second at Le Mans, the 24-hour race of 66, US Can-Am sports car champion, 68-70. First in the class here at Bathurst in uh, 1990, and it was his 10th Bathurst start. And the sad news is that Denny Holm has passed away in Bathurst Hospital following that incident earlier today down Pitt Strait where he struck the wall and came off across the circuit into the other side of the wall. His friends and obviously his relatives have been informed, most of them are here at the circuit. So to all those, those close friends, those hundreds of thousands of friends of Denny Holm who watched him race in a marvellous career, we pass on our sincere condolences. Well, that's shocking news, isn't it? Yes, not the best not the best at all such a lovely man and to have done it all on the uh, the world formula one circuit and obviously the can-am sports and a guy who just loved his motor racing and at uh, 56 years of age was really looking forward to coming here he was full of um, he was full of fun he, he he wanted to do well and do well in the class to support uh, tony longhurst and johnny chicotto his co-driver young queenslander paul morris who ran the shell australian touring car championship this year but just repeating word in from um, andy raymond at uh, bathurst hospital is that uh, denny holm has passed away and his uh, immediate family and relatives have been informed michael the word is that denny suffered a heart attack we were talking about a neck injury earlier but uh, i've heard he suffered a heart attack and i can't help but wonder if he suffered a heart attack and hit the wall or hit the wall and had a heart attack as a result of the impact of the shot well that we'll never know i guess and uh, it's just a tragic uh, event but for all of that the uh, the surviving bnh car the 25 car will continue in the race team manager frank gardner says denny holm would not have wanted it any other way. I would support that. This is just a terrible time for Frank Gardner. He's shutting the, uh, the uh, media over in the pits. He doesn't want to talk about it. It's playing on uh, his mind and he's trying to keep Tony Longhurst with uh, uh, mentally prepared for a very important part of the race this afternoon and Tony would be uh, extremely upset. They're a very close uh, team, the B&H team. But they're going to go ahead and try and uh, finish in the top three here this afternoon with uh, Tony Longhurst and uh, Johnny Chicotto. Well, Frank Gardner and Denny Holm, of course, were of a similar age and they had been great friends and great rivals for, uh, for many a long year. He will be sadly missed by them.